Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm super excited you could be here because today we're going to talk about a couple really cool things. We're going to talk about one, a really interesting and cool way that we're using right now to finance our customers, which is helping us attract a lot more customers and lock down a lot more clients. And at the same time, how you can actually use this resource as kind of a way to be able to get financing and what it can do for your business as well. So with us today is George Sayuni. Now, George is a finance expert and a successful sales leader who drives revenue through building and maintaining client relationships. He is currently the CEO of Swoop Business Solutions, a company that provides customized payment solutions, technology, financing, and business coaching to small and medium-sized businesses. Now, George brings over 23 years of experience in sales to the fintech industry with a specialized focus on payment processing. Now, as a sales expert and chief revenue lead, he has been instrumental in driving sales and revenue growth for ISOs and various businesses as well. Based in Chicago, George's core skill set combines deep business acumen with the expertise to coach and build highly effective leadership teams with consistently that are consistently exceeding quotas. George, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. That was one heck of an introduction. So I really very much appreciate it and I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm excited you could be here too because you know you came across our radar because you honestly do what a lot of others say they can do and just simply cannot do. Um, sure. And so to to take our audience and kind of give you an idea of where George plays in with us, you know, Credit Suite we finance our clients, we let our clients pay for our software and coaching over time, and usually we finance that in house, which means that we let our clients pay over seven, eight, nine months, and then we wait to get paid. And Swoop has changed the game for us because you've been able to take our clients, give them better financing terms that we were giving them quite honestly and then at the same time we get our money right away instead of having to wait so um this is where you guys have played an essential role and you're just killing it so how well received is what you're doing out there you find right now in the industry uh it's incredibly well received you know th this was all born from you know being in the the space the point of sale primarily or fintech space it's kind of where this was born from and doing leasing for hardware, for small to medium sized business owners. And, you know, with a lease, which is a traditional financing model for technology, you know, there's a lot of holes with that. It's really rigid. Uh, it just, frankly, flat out doesn't include SaaS. It doesn't include any type of software technology. And, you know, today for both the merchant and business owners, as well as for companies like yourself that have a product that are reselling that to market or providing value with a software type of a product to the market, you know, it's just not, it's not really up to speed, right? So financing hardware, the hardware really doesn't have much value in, in the market today. It's really whatever the software injection is or the software as a service that's become more and more valuable and has continued to do so in the marketplace. So we're seeing high levels of traction um, because, you know, the, the real difference is that we finance the software, not the hardware, right? So like that is the asset class that we lend against. And, um, you know, this opens up the door for ISOs, agents, technology companies, finance technology companies to be able to accelerate their sales into the marketplace, as you mentioned, with more affordable terms um, on a monthly payment and get paid up front. Right. Not having to wait to collect their payments over time. But what it does for the merchant, typically speaking, is, you know, it allows them to usually get a better value for a lower cost than a monthly payment for whatever technology they're buying. So give and I love how you broke that down. Give our audience that might not even be familiar with financing clients like a lot of people listening. They're like, what are you even talking about? I don't even didn't even know this was a thing. Kind of sure. explain how this works. And you can use us or something else. Somebody's selling, sure. let's say, a SaaS software. Give it an idea of how your product actually works. Yeah, that's a great question. And I'm glad to do that. So I'll break it down from two from two perspectives. All right. So the end user in our scenario is a business owner or a individual that is looking to acquire a technology, right, for their business. A lot of times that technology, you know, it could be things like point of sale technology. It could be a kiosk a point of sale kiosk or just a stand-up advertising kiosk. It could be a menu board. It could be a phone communication system, or it could be software, like a credit suite, bankable product type of a software, a CRM system, a payment gateway, right? So maybe John at John's Pizza, for example, you know, has three hardware point of sale stations. He wants it to sync to his website for online ordering. He wants it to sync to his 
a, a cloud so you can see all of his KPIs and analytics. He wants to sync to, I don't know, his QuickBooks software for his accounting purposes, right? And he needs a software that does all of that. You know, and, and sometimes they need to, you know, buy new software or technology. They need to replace or upgrade technology or they need to add to it, right? They need to add to it. So the end user, that business owner, instead of having a huge outlay in cash, right, uh, to buy hardware or software or both for whatever purpose that may be, you know, they can't typically go to JP Morgan Chase or Bank of America and go get a loan for technology if you're a small to medium sized business owner. That's not what, you know, these retail institutional banks lend against, right? They're looking to do, you know, asset secured based lending on homes, mortgages and, you know, automotive and things of that nature. Right. So, you know, we're a bank that specifically plays to the an alternative financing model, which obviously that financing landscape is changing very fast currently uh, for business owners that have a tough time getting immediate quick funding. You know, these can turn around in a matter of days, right, on things that they may need supplies, inventory, technology, et cetera. Right. So that's the end user. And that's really our mission is to help business owners on Main Street, not the Wall Street business owners, but the mom pop shops on Main Street get access to capital, right? So we focus on that market. We're very familiar with that market. We're talking automotive, retail, restaurants, e-commerce, mobile businesses, et cetera. And then what we also do on the other side of that perspective is we work with businesses like yours that, you know, provide a product that has value to those markets. And we help finance tools a software, like, for example, Credit Suite software helps business owners become more bankable with things like, I don't know, credit cards, lines of credit, invoicing or uh, MCA and all various different types of lending. Right. But that software you provide gives value there. And we are able to help ISOs or resellers or proprietary technology companies like yourself help accelerate that into the market, which, again, provides more value to the business owner. Right. So it could be a one component technology package or it could be a multifaceted component um, technology package. But it eliminates the need for business owners to have a huge outlay in cash and they can pay a monthly payment. Then they can get the same type of technology now as like the Amazons, the Walmarts, these enterprise companies. Right. So the mom and pop shops can compete because they don't have to pay thousands of dollars up front for API integration, web development, programming and coding, et cetera. I love I love how you broke that down. It, it reminds me of something I'm literally dealing with right now. And it stay with me here. But my sure. daughter has won braces since I can remember, right? I don't want braces because they're extremely expensive. <laughs> but I was a kid. I didn't want braces. That's all yeah. she's talked about. She's finally the age where she gets braces. Yesterday, we just got a quote, right? It's like seven thousand dollars to be able right. to get braces. And I got seven grand. I could pay it. I don't want to pay it, George. I don't want to pay seven thousand dollars. And I'm <laughs> sure a lot of other people don't want to pay seven thousand dollars. But what's nice is the source provided a way to finance that over time at, at rates that really made sense, right? So it takes it from I don't know if I want to do this or do it right now to no brainer. Let's move forward. What you basically do, and by the way, it, it, that is like as as a parent, that's like probably one of the biggest regular health expenses you're going to deal with with your kids unless something happens right sure. is that that orthodontic thing this is exactly the same for business like when we look at tech tech is the most expensive thing as business owners that we typically pay for so sure. what you're doing is allowing that ability to be able to finance that over time make it really affordable for somebody like me that might be on the fence or be like i don't want to pay that then i'm like oh this is a no-brainer now and then that helps businesses like us and others attract more customers because they don't have this massive outlay of cash. They can pay reasonable rates over time. And then you win because you have a financing client and we win because we sell a heck of a lot more stuff. Uh, is that one of the main ways that you're seeing a lot of your clients use what you guys have? Yeah, that's a great, I'm glad you brought that up. And, and yes, I mean, it's essentially, so the one thing that we do that's different, again, it's not a lease, it's a finance product, but what it is actually is, is a subscription so like, think about like your Netflix streaming subscription, your, you know, Amazon Prime subscription or any other subscription. You can even buy a vehicle online today on a subscription model, right? So it's a very flexible term and it's a very flexible uh, type of a finance product, right? So you can get technology, hardware, software, 
on a subscription type of a program that has flexible terms, anywhere from like 12, 24, 36, 48, or 60 months. And, and you're right, as far as you mentioned, the brace is at around $7,000. It's funny, in March, 2024, so just last month, restaurant.com came out with some new point of sale statistics. So just putting it, framing that in kind of the, the terms of a business owner, specifically a restaurant business owner, it could be many other types of industries, but for a restaurant business owner, restaurant.com said that the average upfront cost for a business owner to buy a single point of sale station currently is $9,300, right? So, you know, that's a lot of money, especially if you're John at John's Pizza that might be just trying to survive, especially coming out of post COVID, trying to, you know, battle, you know, all of this AI and automation conversation. Like, how do I get you automated, you know, how do I finance that? What does that mean to me? So there's a lot going on there in cost and on the technology side that I think we help lend. Um, we give a tool, I should say, that helps lend to solve that problem. Big tool. And I, I'm shocked by that because we process credit cards virtually, right? Because we're not a retail store. So I sure. have no idea that point of sale technology was so expensive. So ultimately from- and not yeah. to cut you off, but that, that applies to both hardware and a mobile POS. So what we say mobile, we mean, you know, kind of like an online gateway or like a, a software based payment system. Because the, the software today, it's not just payment processing, it's invoicing, it's inventory control, it's marketing, it's employee or client profiles. It's really a business in a box. Right. So even if that software is injected into any, you know, desktop, computer, laptop, wherever you're logging in from. Right. The software is far more robust these days. So when you're talking about API integrations or build out or customization of that software, most software companies that are selling to business owners are going to charge an upfront fee. They're going to charge an uh, integration fee. And they're going to charge an ongoing fee or a licensing fee to maintenance and support that software. So what we're saying is, is you could just buy it and own it. And we'll finance it for you on a monthly payment. So I want to look at this a couple of different ways. Uh, let's say that I'm a business, I'm a business owner, and I'm selling, let's say, hardware software that's not cheap. It's, you know, fairly expensive. Like, you know, Credit Suite's $3,000. We, you know, people sell five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand $10,000, $20,000, maybe $2,000. So it's not cheap. So on one end, you're able to come in and help finance our clients upwards of 12, 24, 36, even 48 months to pay that amount back, making right. it affordable for them, right? That's what, what you're right. describing. Then right. for me as the business owner, um, I, you're letting my clients pay over years potentially. And then what percentage of the money then do I get and how fast do I get it? Yeah, you typically will get somewhere between 75 to 90% of that money up front. And you'll get it once that that client has received that technology. They've activated that technology, you know. So they've done like a a login. They've they've verified that it's working properly. Yes, I received it. Yes, I'm satisfied. You know, and that that really depends on the delivery of the product. So, like for example, just using Credit Suite, if Credit Suite can have that downloaded into their system, you know, in days, it'll be funded to Credit Suite in days. Right. So we're collecting money and we're making money over time. So we assume the risk, you know, based on our underwriting criteria, getting these merchants approved. And most people get approved, by the way. So I think that's also important. It's not like there's a high decline, is it that high declination ratio? It depends on the product being sold, right? There's certain credit profiles or whatnot. But for the average small to medium-sized business owner that does have a retail shop. So if you're selling a technology to a business owner, or if you're selling a hardware to a business owner, current numbers that we have on our credit mix is that we're proving about 87% of all applications that are coming in, which is, uh, you know, we're here to do deals is basically what I'm saying. So on one end, that makes perfect sense. Now, let me ask you this. Is it just technology? Is it hardware or software? Like what if I'm selling something that's not hardware or software? Like coaching or whatever else may be. Yeah. Um, is it just products? Is it services? Is it software hardware? Who specifically is the customer you can help? And who are people that like offer things that, that are not a good fit? Yeah, we love the we love the fintech space or the financial technology space. So that includes typically point of sale, different SaaS software, peripheral softwares for business owners. We love that space because we're innovating that space with the subscription model, getting the folks to move away from, you know, more rigid models and leasing. That said, 
we also do like non fintech or non POS or non you know technology software technology based financing and typically we would move to like a lease or or oftentimes an equipment finance agreement rather than a lease in those scenarios and what we like there are things that really bolt onto the business and what i mean by bolt onto the business you know you might be an automotive dealership that needs 10 automotive lifts right that that are installed we would look at a product like that it's bolts onto the business it's not it doesn't have legs and it's not going to get up and walk away is what i'm trying to say so it's like if it's a signage right is another good example of that you want a marquee sign out front of your retail shop or your office building or whatever the case may be we would do signage we would do bolt-on types of products like automotive lifts um, and there's various different forms of that. But yeah, absolutely. We do heavy equipment. Construction equipment is another opportunity there as well. So, you know, trades or developers that need, you know, large bobcats or dump trucks or things of that nature. Those are all items that we would look at. Now, you said nearly 90 percent approval. I think it was like 87 percent, nearly 90 percent approval. What what are you looking for? I mean, SBA lenders want to see personal financials, business financials, good personal credit, good business credit. Right? I mean, 850 credits or 800 credit scores in some cases. Like, it's really hard to get most kind of financing. It's out there. What are you guys looking for to approve people when your approval rate so high? Yeah, so mid 500 FICO score or higher is basically where we're at. We we may even do some lower, but you know it depends on the business type. So FICO score um, or you know credit score is one of the components. The other component is like we're looking for somebody who has some established credit, right? So like you know you you can't have just one open trade line, right? You you need to have a few open trade lines that are being paid on time or better or better, right? So, and then lastly, we're looking, we like length of time in business. We like business owners that have proven the test of time. Now, it doesn't mean you can't be a brand new business. We absolutely do startups and new businesses. So that is a category, but we're going to look at length of time in business, the business type, you know, if it's retail versus e-commerce, again, those are slightly different programs. We do all of it, right? Um, you know, and, and, and credit, but you know, we're, well, one of the things that, you know, we're born from a payment processing company and, and we have a, a direct sales channel, unlike a lot of these other finance companies that are in the industry where they're waiting for deals to come in from other sales organizations, right? Like, like a credit suite to deliver them a deal. The difference between us and, you know, I would say 95% of the other banks in our space is that we have a sales organization. So we really understand a couple of things when we go to market. One is the pain points of these business owners or the folks that are being lended to. You know, what are they trying to overcome? The other thing is, is we look at deal structure from a lens of trying to get the deal accomplished. So we may actually ask for some financials, bank statements. We may ask for merchant processing statements. We may ask for some financials, you know, tax returns and whatnot. But primarily, it's going to be bank statements or merchant processing statements. And what we're looking for is cash flow. Maybe you have a low FICO score. Maybe you had a tough patch or period of your time that you were, you know, you had a slip in your credit or your business. But if you can prove that you have the cash there to finance some technology and it's going to improve your business or what you're doing day to day, we're interested in looking at that opportunity. It's something I call common sense lending, which doesn't exist very much, as you know, like common sense has been completely removed from the right. financing industry, but it yeah. really is, you know, you're looking at it and saying, okay, you know, does the credit reflect that you're paying some people on time? Ah, uh, you got problems there. Well, did your revenue, did your cash flow just support the fact that you can pay this bill? Like, you, you know, overdrawing all the account and not paying anybody or are you, you know, because we understand, you understand the struggles of entrepreneurs going through it. And I like how you look sure. at this multiple different ways to make common sense decisions, something very rare in the industry as you know yes yeah, definitely very rare you know a lot of folks have you know what, what happens on the banking side just to provide a little clarity there is first you build a sandbox and then you sell that sandbox as the lender to capital markets the capital markets hedge funds venture capitalists private equity whoever these family institutions or family offices whoever is get, you're receiving this uh this funding from in the capital markets then they put a they put a bow and a frame around your sandbox for underwriting, and then if you don't create more sandboxes or don't negotiate the adjustments, what happens is is now you can't operate outside of that sandbox. So what, on the banking side, these lenders almost tie themselves off from being able to have flexibility into the market. One of the things that we refuse to do in the market 
is to do that. But the other thing that we do is when we go to capital markets to, to receive money for deployment for these businesses and for this technology type, we make sure they have clear expectations as to what they're lending against, where, what, who the current market is. And I think that's a big part of our strategy, right? Just kind of throwing that out out there because I, you know, a lot of folks are like, how can you do this? You know, why is it different than, you know, than some other lending folks and why aren't they doing it? And, and it's really about, you know, we position ourselves on the side of the merchant or the side of the reseller rather than keeping ourselves as a bank and only worrying about our own under, internal underwriting guidelines. And I think that's key to our success. Let's look at this the other other side, because there's a lot of people that are listening and watching right now and their, their wheels are turning and they, they see it from this side. They're like, wow, I mean, these guys can help us finance our customers, the people that want to buy our, our stuff. But then there's other people that are thinking about making purchases, right? Mm -hmm. And they're thinking, wow, I, I don't know if the source I'm trying to purchase from knows about Swoop. So talk to me about it from that side. If I'm a business owner and I need to buy a piece of technology, let's say, let's say a point of sale system, let's say uh, whatever, a credit suite, let's say any anything that, we're, that they're looking to buy. And they go to the person selling it and the person selling it doesn't know about Swoop. They're not offering any kind of financing. In that scenario, what what can be done for you guys to like help solve that problem? Or is there a way for you to help solve that problem? 100%. That's a fantastic question and, and one that I haven't covered as much as I would like. So I'm very excited that you brought that up. So if I'm John at John's Pizza or Susie at Susie's Medical Clinic or whoever the owner of any business is, right? And, you know, maybe it's a medical clinic and they want a new laser machine or whatever the case may be, right? Or it's a it's a restaurant. They need eight new point of sale stations. They know which one they want to buy. They know what it is. They know the manufacturer of where to go get it. But they also know, maybe they even have an invoice in hand or they don't. But once they get an invoice in hand, they can send us that invoice. We vet the manufacturer or the technology or the provider of that, that product. We call them, we contact them. We get that company approved in our profile. And then we give the terms directly to the merchant. So we'll work with the business owner directly. We'll get an invoice for whatever product or software or technology they're looking for. We approve the vendor. And once they're approved, again, in a matter of hours, typically speaking, we'll say, here's your monthly payment. Here's your term. You can have this product. We'll, we'll fulfill this invoice. We're going to charge some extra funding um, interest, essentially, or you know, cost to the value of that hardware invoice. Because obviously we're taking the risk on and we're going to make money over time. But yeah, we'll finance it for you. And this is what the terms look like. And then we pay the vendor. We pay the vendor directly. The vendor gets paid in full. And then it's up to us to collect the payment from that merchant or that business owner directly. So very much kind of like if you're going to put it in terms that everybody understands, it's like buying a car, right? Like if you want to go to the Chevrolet dealership or a Toyota dealership and you walk in there, you're like, hey, I want to buy this car right here, this Impala, but I don't want to pay cash. The dealership's going to send you to a bank. The bank's going to give you financing terms while you're there. And then if you accept, you move away, you leave with your car, you get your product, and it's up to you to pay that bank on time. And then the bank pays the dealership in full for the purchase you just made on that financing, right? And they charge you an interest. So we operate it the same way. So if a client has an invoice, and even if they don't know where to buy the product, we're happy to help them, you know, locate a valid vendor, you know, for whatever the product is and, and make sure that it fits, you know, our lending requirements, which a lot of them do. And then, you know, we'll work with them on that if they need some help in that process. But there is a process for that. That's that's fantastic. So even in your example, even if the dealership didn't have a lender they could recommend, then that person can come in and say, I've got a lender and then connect the lender with the dealer. And in that case, you then work with that source selling the product to work it out where you can get them the money that they want right away, which is what they want, and then be able to make it still affordable for the client to pay over time. Correct. Yep. That's 100% correct. So what makes you different in this space? Now, I know from my perspective is, you know, in business, it's really hard to find people that just do what they say they're going to do. Like I'd work like five hours a week if people just did what they said they were going to do, right? But nobody does. So I spend my time chasing down people that actually can do the thing that they're supposed to be able to do, but most of them can't. We all are sitting here and can relate to that. That's what Swoop means to me, right? As Swoop's come in for years, we tried financing sources that never came through, never could do it. So when I think about what sets you apart, you 
actually do what you say you are going to do. And it has been a phenomenal experience for us to work with you guys and for our clients to work with you. Like everybody's happy because you don't want to recommend somebody and then it go badly and then you look bad, right? We've all been there before. Those are the things in my mind that set you guys apart above and beyond. But from your perspective, what does Swoop do that stands out above and beyond in the market? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. It's also really high praise. So very much appreciate that uh, with regards to our relationships. Um, that said, I, you know, I think, you know, number one, we, it's again, kind of that common sense angle that you think about, you know, I'm not sure if a lot of folks know this or not, but, you know, I, I've been in this space for, you know, going on 20 years. However, you know, my family as well as myself have owned small businesses. You know, we've owned restaurants, we've owned, you know, diners and car washes and things of that nature. And so, you know, I have a very soft spot for the business owner that's struggling to survive on Main Street. You know, our, our real mission there is to make sure that we partner, that is that we set clear expectations for business owners that need the financing, right? And that we set, and that we create win-win scenarios for both the reseller, you know, a technology partner, a sales organization that sells to the SMB market, as well as for the merchant. Because a lot of times where the disconnect is, is what we found over the years is that, it's either really good for the merchant and not good for the sales company, or it's really good for the sales company and not very good for the merchant. And then what that leads to is, um, you know, a, a, a basically a cash grab one way or the other that causes unethical sales practices or maybe not so great best practices in the sales process. It's not an even trade. There's not an even compromise happening on the deal. So when we look at our underwriting parameters, when we look at our financing tool as a product, when we look at going to market, number one, we respect the merchant. We respect the sales partnership that we have. And number two, we try to get everyone paid is the key. We try to get everyone paid, meaning that the partner is going to get paid what they need on a product line that satisfies the acceleration of their business, that satisfies, you know, the, the subsidy or subsidizing the cost of their technology or hardware or equipment, but also for the merchant, that's going to give them terms that are acceptable. And that's going to give them a finance tool that is just not financing dollar bills, but it's financing a bundled package that provides real value and impact to the business owner. Because again, we're not here to price gouge anyone or allow any partner to do that. And I think in a lot of scenarios, especially in this kind of alternative micro lending type of space, if you will, I think that that happens quite a bit in the marketplace. And, you know, an internal mission of my own, as well as my teams, we have a great team behind us that's very experienced. You know, we're trying to cure some some not so great best practices that are in the marketplace. We're trying to be the example. So it's all of those things. Uh, but, you know, I think we 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 kind of focus on if we're we do things right by everyone. You know, at the end of the day, it's going to pay. That's kind of how we look at it. George, great stuff today. I mean, this has been very powerful. Thanks for taking the time with us to go through what, what who you are and everything Swoop's doing. I just love what you guys are doing for us and for the industry and for so many business owners out there that the business owners out there that really need what you guys have. So thanks for everything you do. Yeah, fantastic, Ty. I'm, I'm so excited to have been here and thanks for sharing with me today. All right, so listen, you're watching and listening to this. I can't tell you, I don't mention these words very often, but this is a game changer. And there's two different ways to really look at this. The first is, is if you are a business and you are or want to be selling high ticket items, man, this is this is it. This is like the golden ticket. This is like the thing where if you've been manifesting greatness, like it just showed up because this sure. is the path to success. I mean, think about it. Your clients win because they can take that high ticket item that provides value to their life and they can pay over time. I mean, upwards of 48 months, there's not many financing sources that do that. And then they get approved based on common sense underwriter from a financing source has nearly 90% approval rates to show how they actually work, how easy it is for them to work with your clients. You sell a lot more, the client can afford a lot more. As, as George said, it's a win-win for everybody. Then the other side, you're a business owner. You need to buy stuff. We get it all the time. There's just stuff you have to buy that's expensive, whether it be heavy equipment, whether it be point of sale systems, whether it be software, 
it'd be hardware. You know what I'm saying. Like there's some things that are outrageously expensive and we're struggling to get what we need to be able to succeed because we can't pay the bill or we don't want to pay the bill. Well, this gives us the ability to finance that and go to that source and be able to finance it over time. So all of a sudden, all this stuff that's building up that we can't get to, that's barriers in our way, we can now for, for the first time finally afford to actually buy this stuff as well. So in from personal experience, I can't say enough phenomenal things about Swoop. The relationship we've had with them has been exceptional. Their team is exceptional. The product, the technology, everything they provide. And it's it's rare to have customers or refer customers over to a financing source that just boasts, that call us just to brag about how happy they are with Swoop. And it makes us look really, really good. Like they make us look really, really good in doing so. So I cannot say enough positive things about Swoop in these two paths plus that they could take you down. So to be able to get started and learn more, this is what you should do right now. Because remember, none of this means anything if you don't take action. Like taking a step right now can mean it be a game changer for you and your business. And here's the step to take. You've got a few options. First, go to swoopbusinesssolutions.com. That's swoopbusinesssolutions.com. You can learn about the things we talked about today and other stuff they do that we did not even have a chance to dive into. So check it out at swoopbusinesssolutions.com. Now, if you're interested in getting financing or you're interested in offering financing, it's really simple to do. You can either call or email. And the phone number to call, write this down, grab a pen, write this down. It's 877 707 9667. Seven is my favorite number. So you should remember this. It's 877-707-9667. You can also email info at swoopfinancing.com. That's info at swoopfinancing.com. All of that I will put on the show resources page, but take action right now. Go to the website, email, call right now to either start getting financing and offering it for your clients or to be able to get financing for your needs. So check it out. And again, take action right now because this is something that's powerful that could be a real game changer for your business. Thanks for tuning in. And again, George, thanks for coming on with us today. Thanks a lot for having me. I really appreciate it. Take care.